we are in the home of Terry Baltimore. And so when you mention the Hill District to anyone, their mind goes to Terry Baltimore. She is officially the Director of Neighborhood Engagement at the Hill House Association, but she holds the history and the heritage of the Hill District in her heart, and she's here to share that with you today. Terry. Mark is gonna be hard, a very hard act to follow. But one of the things that he said resonates with my story, and that is the universe trying to tell me something. A couple of years ago, I had a phone conversation with David Lewis, storyteller, architect, artist. And every once in a while, David and I connect. And at the end of this particular conversation, he said to me, I've got a new job for you. Great, another job. <laughs> and he said, your job is to collect the stories. And the person you need to talk to is Troy West. Here's his email address, his phone number, his home address. I'm not sure if he's still alive, but you need to call Troy. <laughs> okay. So I hang up the phone and I think, oh, sh <laughs> If Troy is alive, yay. But if he's not, then oh my God. I'm the person that has to call David Lewis and say, I'm sorry to tell you this. So what I did was put Mr. West's information on the corner of my desk. A Couple of weeks later, I go to an event at the Carnegie Museum of Art, and they're talking about play spaces for children. The lights go down, slides come up, and this is the universe telling me to call Troy West. Because big as life, one of the slides said, Troy West. <laughs> All right. So I figured, well, if the universe put his name up, big as life, maybe it was my cue to call. I called Troy West and he changed my life. I love the hill. Every day I tell stories about this place and every day I learn something different. And Troy West opened a door for me that was so unexpected. He introduced to me the court of ideas. I had never heard about it asked people in the neighborhood and people weren't really clear. They kind of remember it, but not really. And every day for a period of weeks, I would get these emails of these incredible images of the Court of Ideas. So the Court of Ideas really started because young students from the architecture school at CMU and young people in the Hill called the Young Black Organizers were looking for a space of their own. It was the 60s and there was a lot of turmoil. So war and race and all of those things were percolating. And these were young people who were looking for an opportunity to have the conversation in a space of their own design. And what they did was absolutely incredible. They designed this space and then without the permission of the property owner, constructed it. <laughs> so what's really cool is to hear Mr. West say, and Mr. Feinberg came back and he was really shocked to see what was an empty lot had turned into this incredible space. It was a space that they wanted to create that provided opportunity for conversation. But then they also did some really cool things there as well. So they had snowball fights and holiday celebrations, kids played on this space. They had music and art there. They had those difficult conversations there. But mostly they began to create a community and that space to me is sacred. It only lasted a short period of time. And then as the neighborhood started to change, the buildings around this space kind of were knocked down on top of it. And what was really interesting was two years ago, we had Troy West come back. And what we did was an archeological dig to uncover the Court of Ideas. It was really interesting to not only talk about the Court of Ideas, but then we started to engage kids in this neighborhood in conversations about what kind of places they wanna have and what kind of conversations they wanna engage in in a space of their own design. So Mr. West went to a local elementary school and talked to fourth and fifth graders 
about the court of ideas and the kinds of things that they wanted to see there. So they wanted art and they wanted music. And one kid who I'm sure all of his teachers loved said, I want Wi-Fi so I can do my homework outside. <laughs> but one of the things that that conversation sparked was this idea that we can create a space again in this neighborhood for the 21st century difficult conversations that we need to have around race and sexism, police brutality, un unemployment. And so what's really interesting is this story has come full circle. Two weeks ago, an incredible group of design students from CMU have been, have been talking to people in the neighborhood about what we could do with the Court of Ideas. How incredible is that? That the universe would help, would have students from CMU and this, and this community create this space and then 50, 60 years later, recreating it in a way that makes sense now. So what I hope you will see sometime in the spring are some really cool prototypes of the Court of Ideas and the ways that we can engage not just young people, but everybody in conversations that are incredibly important to Pittsburgh and the Hill District and to this country. So thank you very much. I love the Court of Ideas. <laughs> Woo! I love it. I wish we had a Court of Ideas in every neighborhood. And I'm excited to see that CME is bringing it back. That's great. Reactions? Yay. What? Build it. Build it, yeah. Woo. Anything else? Build it everywhere. <laughs> Build it everywhere, Andrew says. I like it. It's nice. What? We need a climbing court. We need a climbing court? Climate. Climate court. Oh, we need a climate court. Oh, we're going to make it topic specific now. <laughs> Okay, so what is a place you love and why? Our first house, because we can get a puppy. <laughs> what is a place you love and why? My house. I used to hate it <laughs> because it was such a project. But now that we have brought it back to life and given it a second chance, I love it and cannot wait to see it at the end of the day. When you put heart into a place, it becomes part of you. I actually said today, I was giving Jenna a hard time because I wanted her to moderate today instead of me. And uh, she said she didn't want to be in the spotlight. And I said, it doesn't feel like being in the spotlight when I'm here, here at the Hill House because we're here all the time. It feels like our place now. And so thank you, Terry. <laughs> so what is the place you love and why? The sanctuary of East Liberty Presbyterian Church because the music warms my soul. <laughs> Churches are amazing places. 